please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism. There's been lots of private, secret testing of vehicle-to-grid and vehicle-to-home functionality about electric cars in Australia by the manufacturers, uh, energy retailers, energy grid owners, but very little information has actually been shared with the public. That changes today. I've got some information from a test session with Melbourne EV owners for a variety of brands and models shared with me by Retrovolt Solutions, which facilitated the tests this weekend. Let's find out more. Okay, so Retrovolt Solutions is a company that's getting the Infini Charger and V2H box certified for Australian sale hopefully available soon because we want lots of options for V2H and V2G hardware. More options means more different feature sets and importantly, different price levels. Fewer suppliers means higher prices. More suppliers, better prices. Anyway, this is the details of the test. Just for people who aren't aware, vehicle to grid and vehicle to home technology allows an electric vehicle owner to act as a basically a small personal power plant. Power can be exported back to your building, offsetting demand or used to supply an isolated load during a blackout, like the recent Hurricane Alfred on the east coast of Australia. To showcase and validate CCS2 based V2G readiness in Australia, Retrovolt Solutions hosted a public test weekend with multiple EV models. The goal was to demonstrate real-world operation of their InfiPower 7 kW ECS2 bi-directional system and gather compatibility data across different vehicles. The test system combined the Infi charger, which I'll show you in a second, which is a wall-mounted DC charger, and the V2H box, which is an off-grid interface. The CCS2 charger supplies up to 7 kilowatts of DC power to an electric car over a 300 to 750 volt range, drawing 230 volt single phase AC at up to 38 amps and is compliant with ISO 15118 DIN 70121 and OCCPP 1.6J. This industry has a lot of acronyms and a lot of standards. A lot of numbers and yeah, anyway, but it is a very useful thing to know. The V2H box delivers 100 to 240 volt AC up to 40 amps through an isolation transformer and includes a backup mode that enables seamless on-grid to off-grid transitions. For on-grid tests, the charger was connected to the building circuits. Off-grid tests used an isolated load connected directly to the V2H box to emulate household backup. Now, the test method for each EV followed a five-stage sequence. On-grid charging, which is charging from the building supply. On-grid discharging, exporting power back to the building from the test vehicles. Off-grid discharging, powering an isolated load via the V2H box. Fourth was on-grid to off-grid transition, switching from the building supply to an isolated load while discharging. This requires backup mode to be enabled. Automation sequence was the last test, a seven minute program alternating charging and discharging with power steps at four kilowatt and five kilowatt. So what were the results and which models participated? Well, that's a really important question. My notes say that it was original first generation Addo 3, BYD Addo 3, Hyundai Kona 2024 model, a BYD SEAL performance with Tesla supercharger upgrade modification, a BYD Shark, and a Hyundai Ionic 6. These were the test results. The BYD Addo 3 completed all three, all tests smoothly. Charging, discharging, and transitions were stable, and the automation sequence executed without issues. This sounds like very similar to testing which other BYD Auto 3 owners of, in Australia have done with other V2G systems, such as the SIG Energy one. The Hyundai Kona charged and discharged normally. In off grid mode, the car stopped discharging about 5 to 10 seconds after the load was removed a likely protective behavior. 
Initial on-grid to off-grid transition failed because backup mode was disabled. After en enabling it, transitions were smooth. The BYD seal performance with Tesla supercharger modification were charged successfully, but immediately requested to stop when discharging in either mode. Earlier tests by Retrovolt Solutions with a BYD seal that didn't work with Tesla superchargers passed this test, suggesting that the Tesla supercharger wiring upgrade with the vehicle interferes with V2G discharging. More testing is required to figure that one out for sure. The BYD Shark is not a pure EV, and personally, I prefer please buy pure EVs. They're much better than hybrids in my opinion, but I know some people will want to know the results anyway. The BYD Shark charging could not start when the vehicle was off. Turning the ignition on allowed charging to commence. All subsequent discharging, transition and automation tests were completed successfully. Bear in mind that with any plug-in hybrid like the Shark, the battery is much smaller than a pure EV. So if you invest in an expensive V2G, V2H home charger or charger for your business, you're going to get a lot more value out of it with an EV, a pure EV that has a much bigger battery than you will out of a FEV, a plug-in hybrid that has a small battery. Anyway, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, not much to say about that. Test results were flawless, all stages with no abnormal behavior. Okay, very interesting. Some other interesting observations from the testing process in terms of dashboard displays, the Hyundai Kona and Hyundai Ioniq 6 displayed, displayed a discharge rate without a negative sign on the dashboard, making it look like it was charging rather than discharging. A anecdotally, from what owners of electric cars in Australia who are testing V2G, V2H tell me, this is pretty common. A lot of electric cars, when using V2G, V2H at the moment, don't display negative on the dashboard. It looks like it's charging, but the time to finish the session just keeps increasing instead of decreasing as it would if you're filling the battery. Now, the BYD Auto 3 displayed a negative sign during discharging, clearly indicating reverse power flow. It seems like BYD might have planned ahead and set up their car software to use to be able to use V2G V2A more easily. But as far as I know, BYD Australia have still not made any public comment on warranty coverage for V2G V2A yet. Same for Hyundai Australia and most other brands apart from Geely, which I did a video about a few days ago. See that link in the comments. Now, maximum charging and discharging power. Some notes from the testing were that the Hyundai Kona 2024 reached up to 6.5 kilowatt rate when discharging, which is almost double its V2L rate of 3.3. And the BYD Auto 3 peaked at 5.9 kilowatts for both charging and discharging. In conclusion, the InfiPower CCS2 bi-directional system, according to the manufacturer, remember I wasn't there, they've supplied this test data to me. I live in Sydney, the tests were done in Melbourne. But according to the, manuf the distributor in Australia, Retrovolt Solutions, the InfiPower CCS2 bi-directional system reliably delivered V2G and V2H functionality across multiple test EVs supplied by the EV owner enthusiast community Thank you to those people. I'm not going to mention who they are because they may want to remain anonymous. Enabling backup mode is essential for a smooth switch from on-grid to off-grid. The test revealed vehicle-specific behaviors, such as of Kona's off-grid cutoff, the Shark's need to be switched on to initiate charging, and on the other hand, the Addo 3 and Ionic 6 were fully compatible and worked with V2G, V2H with ease. The Tesla modified seal could not discharge at all, highlighting how aftermarket hardware upgrades, even if done by a dealer, may impede V2G use. We'll see how that works with more testing. Overall, the weekend demonstrated that CCS2-based V2G 
is getting ready for real world use when both charger and vehicle firmware are configured correctly. And also importantly, when the different car makers finally make clear statements saying what level of V2G and V2H use their cars are allowed to be used for in Australia without impacting on the car warranty for the battery, the battery management system, etc., or whether they don't allow it at all. We'll have to see and wait to get clear statements from all the manufacturers about that. Hopefully that happens soon. Thanks and catch you later. Thanks for liking, subscribing and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks and see you later.